Hey folks, uh, this is uh, trial two. I had some people come in and I had to stop this video and start over again anyway. So graphing exponential functions. This is uh, our IM2 class. So um, now we're skipping 10-1. Uh, I'll try and put that up, but our school district has skipped 10-1. But it, it's a good lesson. It's finding the inverses and stuff, which is an IM3 lesson. But um, uh, I'll do my best. It just takes some time to make these. Anyway, so how do we graph the exponential function that's of the form of f of x equals a times b to the x, okay? So a will influence our graph, b will influence our graph, and this is always going to be x, at least in this lesson right here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and, and uh, graphing um, uh, this guy right here, okay? So this symbol, you've seen it before, the sideways 8, it represents infinity. And we can describe our end behavior of a graph. Do you remember that in module 1, end behavior um, of a function by describing what happens to the function values as x approaches positive infinity? That means when we're going to the right forever and as x approaches negative infinity. What's our graph doing? Okay, does that ring a bell? So let's go ahead and graph each exponential function. And the reason why it's exponential is because x is in the exponent. Okay, if that was a number right there, it is no longer called an exponential. Like y equals, say we had y equals x squared. Let me type that in there. If we had this, you guys, uh, uh, y equals or f of x equals x squared. Let me get an exponent feature right there. That is not an exponential function because the exponent is a number. This is an exponential function because x is in the exponent. This is called a power function later. But we've done that before. That's a quadratic, you guys. A quadratic does those parabolas. Okay, and we've graphed parabolas before, but exponentials don't graph parabolas. So here we go. Let's graph f of x equals 2 to the x, okay? So let's go ahead. And so here's a right here. So a, there's a, there's b, okay? So it's in this form, a times b to the x, and I think it asks us, yeah, so after graphing, identify a and b and the y-intercept and the end behavior. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and make a t-chart or a table with several x values. I'm going to choose these x values all the time. We can do more if that doesn't help you, but this should give us a general idea. Okay, and then we're going to connect all the points and stuff. All right, so, so let's go ahead and plug in 2 to the negative 1. So 2 to the negative 1, you guys, is 1 over 2 to the positive 1. Do you remember if it's a negative exponent, it goes downstairs and becomes a positive exponent. And 1 over 2 to the 1 is 1 half, which is 0.5. So we're going to go to the left 1 and up a half a square, up 0.5, okay? All right, anything to the 0 equals 1. So 2 to the 0 equals 1. Um, uh, 2 to the 1st equals 2. So I'm going to go um, uh, to the right 0, up 1. I'm going to go to the right 1, up 2. So we're going to plug in 2 right there. So 2 to the 2 power is 2 squared, or 4. Okay, so we'll go to the right 2, up 4. Okay, let's graph these points. Okay, so there's um, those points right there. There's negative 1.5 right there. Okay, and then there's 0, 1. This is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is always when x equals 0. So wherever x equals 0, that's our y-intercept right there. Okay, and then uh, over 1, up 2, over 2, up 4, and connect these with a, a smooth curve. So it's going to go down like that, okay? Alrighty, so there it is right there. So we get, uh, there's our function, f of x equals 2 to the x. Okay, let's answer the other question. So its exponential form is f of x equals a times b to the x, so it's 1 times 2 to the x. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and our y-intercept is always right there. All right, our end behavior. So as x goes to infinity, so as we go to the right, what's the graph doing? The graph is going up, so f of x goes to infinity. Okay, now my kids got this one. I was, I was um, pleasantly surprised. So as x goes to the left forever and ever and ever, what's the graph doing? It's approaching y equals 0. Okay, so in behavior, as the x approaches uh, infinity, and it's written with uh, x arrow infinity, then y approaches infinity. So as we go to the right, it goes up. As we go to the left, the graph goes down. It will never cross this. This is called an asymptote. It'll never cross this. It'll infinitely get close to it, but never cross it. So it approaches, though. It infinitely approaches 
uh, y equals zero, so y will approach zero. Okay? All right, let's try another one. I'm on my prep period, so there's a class next door, and they're doing some sort of activity in there. I don't know if you can hear the chatter in the background, but anyways, that's what that's all about. Okay, so here, A is 3, B is 4. I think I goofed on this. Yeah, right here, this should be a 4 right there. So let's just pretend like this is a 4 on all of them. In fact, I might be able to just take care of that. Okay, so let's plug in uh, negative 1. So we get 3 times 4 to the negative 1, which becomes... 3 over 4 to the positive 1. Okay, let me change that. This is a 4 right here. Uh, I told my kiddos in class I taught this lesson yesterday. All right, and then so um, uh, this 4 to the negative 1 goes downstairs and becomes 4 to the positive 1. So we get 3 times 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths, which is 0.75. So we'll go to the left one, up 0.75. All right, let's plug in 0. Anything to the 0 equals 1. So this 4 to the 0 is going to be 1, but it's going to be 3 times 1, which is 3. Okay, so when we plug that in, we're going to get 3. Let me keep switching that off. That way I can save it and be done. All right, and then uh, let's plug in uh, x equals 1. So we're going to have 3 times 4 to the 1 power, which is 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, sorry about this here, guys. I thought I fixed it, and, and I forgot to save it yesterday. All right, let's plug in 2. 3 times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so... Um, oops, I think I goofed on that last one. I'll do this at the end. I'll come back and do it. Uh, did I? I sure did. Well, uh, yeah, I'll fix it later. Sorry, you guys. So here we go. Let's go ahead and graph. Now, notice this graph, you guys, and I'm just picking the, the graph that the textbook gave me. Here we're going by 1s on the x-axis, but these are going by 7.5s. So you can make them go by whatever you want, you guys, to accommodate your graph right here. All right, but so I can use the picture that they have. It's easier for me to draw that right there. But you can do any graph you want. But notice we're going all the way up to 48 right there. Okay, so go to the left one, up 0.75. Well, if this is 7.5, then 0 0.75 is like right about there. Okay, 0, 3 would be, well, this 3.5 would be, I don't know, so it would be like right about there-ish. Okay, 112, now we're kind of catching a bite right there. And then 248 is going to be way somewhere up here. Okay, so there they are. All right, and then let's go ahead and connect them with a smooth curve. And let's talk about um, uh, A and B and all that stuff. So A is uh, 3, B is 4, and the y-intercept is always when x equals 0 right there. Okay. Alrighty, so uh, where am I? So um, now let's do end behavior. So as we go to the right, it goes up. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. And again, as x goes to the left, negative infinity, y is going to zero. Now it's not always going to be like that. You'll see why in just a second. Let's do this guy right here. y equals negative 2 times 3 to the x. Okay, so when we plug in negative 1, it'll be 2 times 3 to the negative 1, which is 2 over 3 to the positive 1 which is negative two-thirds, sorry, it's negative, I'll put that negative right there, and two-thirds is 0.6666666 so forever and ever and ever, so about negative 0.7, okay? So we're going to go uh, to the left one, down, this time down to negative 0.7, okay? Zero, when we plug in zero, three times, uh, three to the zero is equal to one, anything to the zero equals one, so negative two times one is negative two, okay? So we'll go uh, zero, down two, plug in one, 3 to the first power is 3, so so um, you always got to do the exponent first. 3 to the first is 3, times negative 2 is negative 6. So to the right 1, down 6. Let's plug in 2. 3 squared is 9, times negative 2 is negative 18. All right, so here's our graph. Let's check it out. The, the x-axes are going by 1s. The y-axes looks like they're going by 3s, okay? So to the left one, it's going to go down to negative 0.7. So I don't know, right about there. Zero, negative two, so right about there. One, negative six, right about there. And then two, negative 18, right about there, okay? Let's go ahead and, and um, uh, connect them with a nice smooth curve. Okay, now, so uh, A is negative two, B is three, and the y-intercept is right there when x equals zero, so it's at ne zero, negative two. Okay, the end behavior. As we go to the right, this graph goes down. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. And as we go to the left, it goes to zero again, okay? 
All right, so let's try this guy, okay? So this one's gonna influence it. Sorry, my squeaky chair in a different way. Let's plug those in. So 0.4 to the negative one is one over 0.4 to the positive one. So two over 0.4 is, um, is um, uh, let's see, uh, two divided by 0.4, and I did that in my class yesterday. So 0.4 goes into two five times, okay? Plug in zero. Anything to the zero equals one, so two times one is two. Plug in one. Okay, so 0.4 times two is 0.8. Plug in two. So 0.4 squared is 0.16 times 2 is 0.32, okay? So let's go ahead and line them up. There it is graphed right there, okay? So look, it's like a backwards J, you know? These are called J curves, so anyway, so as we go to infinity, the graph goes to zero. And when we go to negative infinity, the graph goes to positive infinity, Okay, and of course, uh, there's your A and B and your Y intercept right there. Okay, so let's try this one. Now, Now, what influenced it that made it go the other way, you guys, was this point 0.4. Okay, now what influenced the other one that made it go upside down was this negative 2 right there. All right, so if we have a negative, it makes it go down. If we have a decimal that's less than 1 or a fraction that's less than 1, then it makes the graph go in the opposite direction right there. Okay, if that was positive and that was less than one, then it gave us what was called a J curve. Okay, so they're always going to be these sort of J sort of curves. Okay, all right, so when we plug in uh, negative two and 0.5, I'm just cruising along, it's going to give us this graph right there. Okay, all right, and then uh, there's our end behavior, and so here is, uh, de uh, describe the end behavior when, uh, when A is positive and B is greater than 1. Well, it looked like that. So that was our end behavior. Okay? When A was negative and B was greater than 1, it looked like that. Okay? So it's either going to look like, like this graph, or it's going to look like that graph, or it's going to look like that graph, or it's going to look like that graph right there. Those are the only four possibilities. So, so here they are. It's either going to be a J curve, or it's going to be an upside down J curve, or it's going to be a backwards J curve, or it's going to be a backwards upside down J curve. So here's a trick, you guys. On any exponential graph, notice X is in the exponent on exponential graphs, do a t-chart and just test X equals 0 and X equals 1. And then once you got two points, then you can just think, okay, it's going to be one of those graphs. So, so it'll give you either uh, this point and this point, or this point and this point, or this point and this point. So just when x equals 0, x equals 1, it'll take you in the, in the correct direction. So here we go. Draw a quick graph, state a, b, and the y-intercepts. Okay, so let's test. x equals 0, x equals 1. So plug in 0, 4 to the 0 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Plug in 1, 4 to the 1 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so can you see which way this graph is going? If you can't, then just plug in some more x's. That should tune it up. I'd plug in x equal negative 1 if you need to. But I can tell it's going to be a j curve. It's going to go down like that. Okay, so just go ahead and draw it. Okay, all right, that's good enough for me. All right, so here, right here. Okay, plug in x equals 0, x equals 1. Get your y values. Okay, and you get these two y values. When it's 0, negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. When it's 1, um, negative 5 times 0.5 gives me a negative 2.5, okay? That tells me this graph is going like this, okay? It's asymptotically going towards y equals 0, okay? All right. Uh, now, if you're in my class, that's going to be your assignment. Take care.